crypto miner manufacturers they're shady man they're real shady and if you want to get into cryptocurrency if you want to start earning passive income 24 7 365 like all the you know the <laughs> the hype taglines can get you right well then you need to be aware of what's going on and today as someone who's been mining cryptocurrency full-time for over five years wow i'm gonna break down a lot of the things i've seen and learned and give you insight especially into some shocking information i've come across recently my name is vosk you're on the vosk coin youtube channel but let's check out what's going on behind the curtain it's not good it's not good at all So here's the deal, right? ASIC miners, they're application specific integrated circuit miners. They're purpose built machines. All they do is mine cryptocurrency, specifically normally one crypto mining algorithm. ASIC miners are the evolution of an arms race to mine cryptocurrency because mining cryptocurrency simply makes money. And if things make money, then people bring more money and they try to become the best at making that money. Thus, a Bitcoin originally mined with CPUs, available in every computer, moved to graphics cards, ASICs, FPGAs, and then eventually very advanced ASIC miners. And these ASICs are so advanced that it's just straight up a waste of time, okay, to use any other hardware to mine Bitcoin and really almost always any of the other cryptocurrencies that are also ASIC mined. And once these manufacturers gained a monopoly on this being, I mean, it's very niche, right? then they started making miners and they're the only ones who make them they got all the power they got all the control and well they have to sell enough shovels for it to make sense otherwise just build a bunch of them yourself and get rich yourself mine all the coins yourself that's a greedy mindset but that is the mindset that they maintain okay so here's so here's like a recent uh, a recent conversation and blurb and it'll this is one thing that will definitely probably resonate with you they're like yeah um that's our current model we actually spec it down. They already have a better model, but they want to sell a bunch of this lower spec model and they have the next model ready to go that is just simply a more efficient and more powerful version. But it's like, why don't you just make the better version from the beginning? But if they do that, then they don't have a next one to sell and hype people up and sell more of. And it doesn't look like they're advancing and that they're like developing and progressing, right? So, I know that this type of thing has been done in many different industries throughout history, but in this sector, it's very shady and just malicious in a way, right? Especially because mining is just a consumption of electricity. So they're going to sell you something and they're going to sell something to you in a few months, maybe a year. That's way better. That's going to outdate what you previously bought. They're playing you against yourself and everyone else. And the second they get a lead over other manufacturers, then they really start trying to take advantage of things like this. If you didn't know this, most minor manufacturers actually all just stem out of the major companies like Bitmain and InnoSilicon. And some of those engineers and designers have defected and that's how you end up getting some alternative minor manufacturers, which also really speaks to just how centralized all of that is and it's still coming out of just a couple little sectors. I find it astonishing that some major players like Nvidia and AMD haven't entered the mining arms race. You know, there's the Intel ASIC chip and we all wait and year over year we look for it, but we still just haven't seen it. I think we'll see, we'll finally seriously get it here maybe soon, just due to the popularity and, and the market cap, the straight up value of Bitcoin. Uh, but yeah, that's a little bit of an aside. I understand that AMD as well as Nvidia make crypto specific mining gpus but then they publicly condemn mining with like locking hash rates and uh other things like that it's just it's just a it's a it's a clown show you know it's all it's crazy it's just it the more you really learn about life and the way everything goes down in this world it's just like that's a scam that's a sham that's spam and they're just like i just I ain't never want to play the game anymore, right? But we take a deep breath, we pick up the pieces, and we push on, okay? As any warrior or whatever cool title you want to give yourself would. And that's what we do. I will say the landscape has gotten better for ASIC mining 
over the years because some companies have just had to shape up due to public scrutiny or just you know evolution over time and just the you know maybe they go public right you go public you have a publicly traded stock you can only be so shady that that way like you're being held to a lot more accountability standards a lot more eyes are looking they're prying okay and so i think that's cool i think that's a good thing uh generally speaking you know for the consumer let's talk about two scenarios right so a few years ago several years ago i guess now at this point bitmain the biggest miner manufacturer of asic miners right the biggest asic miner manufacturer i should say came out with the d3 it was wildly profitable i got one of the first batch batches in as i think it was making like 120 bucks a day it was cool it was exciting it was crazy and uh you know that was you know on track to make life-changing money for me especially at that stage and uh Bitmain knew that they knocked it out of the part with this thing mining Dash, okay, on the X11 mining algorithm. And so they sold way more miners and ultimately just way too much hash rate, way too many miners, right, released into this ecosystem. They knew that. They could run the math. These guys are geniuses. They're not stupid. They make ASIC miners, okay? That's not an easy thing. So they had their first batch, wildly profitable. Then they had their second batch, dramatically dropped the mining profitability of these machines. By the time the whole third batch hit, these things weren't even covering their electricity costs on pretty good electric rates. It was a blatant scam of just selling more shovels than that mining ecosystem could support. They should have been a better actor, ran the numbers, and never put people in a situation like that because they have a monopoly style grip on this miner manufacturing. At the end of the day, they're going to be fine. And people be like, I'll never buy one again. Well, guess what? If you want to buy Bitcoin, you're going to probably be buying one from them and all these other ones. And, and they come out with a lot of, especially in that era, like the best ASIC miners for other altcoins, different cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, basically, to put it simply, they did fine and they're doing fine still. But a lot of those people that got burned never made their money back, some never recovered, and some even quit not only mining, but even cryptocurrency as a whole. That sucks, that's terrible. And that is just a very clear example of a bad actor in the space. Fast forward, right now, we have all these, <laughs> guess who's back again? Guess who's back? Bitmain just dropped the ant miner E9 to mine Ethereum, but Ethereum won't even be mineable by the time half of these miners probably even ship. And the mining profitability would go from something like $59 a day after you pay a residential electric bill to literally probably like a dollar, if that. A lot of these people that buy these, they're gonna get f They're gonna quit crypto. They're gonna quit mining. They may be buying beyond their means, which, you know, that's their own mistake and issue true, but you don't want to have such a treacherous environment where people are just getting obliterated left and right. You know, it's like we're storming the Normandy beach. It's, it doesn't have to be that way. And it, and it's just, it shouldn't be that way. And yeah, basically, and it's not just Bitmain, many different minor manufacturers like Apollo has, have released a bunch of Ethereum and Ethereum classic miners recently. And they're very profitable and they're pretty cheap. They're a pretty good deal right now, right? But they're doing that because they know now is the key time to dump all that stock, to cash in on that R&D, on that design. Why are these miners all popping up at about the same time? They've been dealing to clients that buy millions and millions of dollars of miners at a time, okay? They've been dealing with their own personal mining farms. They've been dealing with just shady shit, okay? And now, they're dumping all of their remaining stock and making any more if they sell out and they, and they can, they have the capabilities and all that stuff, whatever else, on the uninformed, unsuspecting, and just naive noob retail mining sector, okay? These guys go on mining profitability calculator websites, they see this thing, and they're like, oh, 59 bucks a day, that's crazy. And then they're like, only $10,000, I could definitely buy one. You know, I'll move, I'll move this around, I'll sell that, I'll buy one, and then in less than a year, I'll make my money back, or whatever the break-even projection is. But uh, Ethereum's not supposed to be mineable then, and Ethereum Classic is where all that hash is going to go, not just for even those Ethereum ASIC miners, because look at the listings. Most of these miners can mine both coins. 
Most of these Ethereum miners will get firmware updates to make it so they can also mine Ethereum Classic. Also, is it not shocking that miner manufacturers like Apollo are double dipping and making two models, one for Ethereum Classic and one for Ethereum? It could be set up to do both. Example, the Antminer E9. Okay, maybe you wouldn't get the cheaper version, right? Because there are some differences between the Ethereum Classic mining algorithm and the Ethereum mining algorithm. We have ETH and ETH ETC there, right? But they're minuscule. That's why some miners can mine both. Then you have manufacturers like Forest Miner, right? And, and who the hell are they? I'd never heard of them until they showed up with an insanely profitable and powerful Ethereum miner on the verge of Ethereum's mining death. It's not a coincidence. Don't be stupid. Okay? They're pulling one over on us. In a way, we're getting rugged. It's the same old story. It's the same old And I find this really conflicting because I love mining. Absolutely, a ton. Earning passive income 24 seven with your little robotic employees, it's as cool as it gets. And it can be a path to financial freedom. But these manufacturers are acting in their own best interests by far. I understand a capitalistic society and all that stuff. And like, look, they can get theirs, but they don't also have to set people up for a fall, right? It's just, it's, it's too much. It's negligent. And, and it's just it's malicious. It, it's, it's evil. They're evil. A lot of ASIC minor manufacturers have gotten better over the years though. Whether they would even have a retail website, right? Even have the option to buy whether they would deal in smaller singular orders as opposed to bulk only. Like that side of it has gotten better. Gold Shell is absolutely guilty of price gouging their customers. We've all seen it and watched it. It's, it's frustrating and disappointing. But I do have to also applaud Gold Shell for their box series of miners and helping decentralized mining, make it more accessible, make more miners, make smaller miners, make more efficient miners, make quiet miners. Okay, all those things really help, just say the average Joe, get into mining. And I think that's really cool because mining truly is a really fun and incredible hobby and it can be quite lucrative too. But again, on the topic of what we've discussed today, it's not all butterflies, donuts, and rainbows, my friends. Like many industries, especially those that are heavily rooted in, in money and making money and currencies, right? Some shady sh goes down. Why am I even here yelling at a camera today talking about this anyway? I just want to share my point of view. I want to share what I know. I want to share what I've learned over the years. And maybe a rebuttal would be like, well, then why don't we just use multi-purpose hardware like CPUs and GPUs? Well, don't think that in the industrialization of those have not happened. There's absolutely insane mining farms deploying more GPUs than you and I could ever count. There are also CPU mining farms. So don't think that these things are just an altruistic, simple alternative, that they're the answer. In a way, ASIC miners are actually incredible because they only mine a cryptocurrency. They're not multi-purpose. So by buying that hardware, you're invested and just entrenched in that ecosystem, which is pretty cool. It's in a way like you become a, a true miner, a true soldier, a true supporter of that because that's all that hardware does. And that is actually one of the interesting things that even Coinbase broke down in their proof of work blog post a while ago. Other people have talked about it before too, but uh, I was just surprised to see Coinbase kind of take that point of view. Uh, for me personally, I'm not you know, quitting or I'm not like getting discouraged. I'm out here on my mining farm, or maybe it's a bit of a roundup to call it my mining farm just yet. It's the mining farm I'm building. Right, and so I've got electricity with the electric company and my electrician on order. All those balls are rolling there. I got the mining shed back there and it's not the only mining specific building we're gonna have here. The Voscoin HQ or whatever, we need to still come up with a cool, maybe a cooler name for it. Um, that's gonna be a warehouse, it's gonna be a test bench, it's going to be a repair center and just kind of work on everything, you know, Bitcoin, crypto and Voscoin related in that building. Um, you know, doing all this stuff out of my house for years has been a lot of fun, but it's also been taxing and just always miners and boxes and shit everywhere. I mean, I got a miner in my bathroom again. Again! You did it again, Bosk! I did! I'm sorry! I'm not sorry! I, I, I would do it again! I see, I'm, I'm out of control. And that's why we had to make a building and I have to go 
do my stuff in that building and we're gonna start having a little bit of work-life balance can you tell that i've spent a lot of time thinking about this can you tell that i've also discussed this with miss vosk many many times uh, so you know that's the sitch uh be careful be cautious at the end of the day these minor manufacturers they're they're not good guys they're not good guys at all and uh don't don't ever think them to be and uh that's that's really the situation that's a little bit of insight uh, those are kind of the key things that kind of come to mind uh, the best thing i could really ever advise you is you know <coughs> subscribe to the boss when you no no stop that it would be to join the Voscoin Discord server and the Voscoin Talk forum. Connect with the community. There's over 40 or 50,000 miners just in the Discord server alone, okay? And there's people there 24-7, 365, that are just overflowing with knowledge, good ideas, and above all, support, right? It's not like you may not have someone to seek guidance from, especially if you're new and getting into this. Connect with me here on the tube. Connect with me and the squad, the community, in the Discord server, on the forum. At the end of the day, you know, everybody, especially at least in our community, wants everyone else to win, to do well. And everyone happily shares what they know and their knowledge uh, just to the betterment of everyone else participating and involved. Just like Tails always tries to share my popcorn after she snuck a popcorn bite the other day. That's our CMO, our chief mining officer. We don't give her any human food, but I dropped a kernel or popcorn piece and I put it on the table and then she was up by it and she sniped it and now she realizes she loves popcorn. It's crazy. Dogs are so smart, at least some of them, like Tails. But anyway. <laughs> that's 10 seconds of tales for today um as always thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i'm gonna head out like spongebob now thanks for watching